Yo, what's going on gamers? It's your boy, Daily Tactics here, back with some more Star Wars news. Now, this is not going to be Star Wars gaming news today, but it is going to be some pretty entertaining news nonetheless. There is some serious Disney absurdity here, which seems to be ever frequent in any kind of Star Wars news to hit the news board of Daily Tactics, Daily Tactics Anchor Daily here, smash like, subscribe, just give it a little boop, just hit, hit those buttons with a little boop, but either way, let's start talking about a tweet that Walt Disney World tweeted out 11 hours ago as of me recording this, see it, feel it, live it. Get the details on Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, a two-night adventure launching at Walt Disney World in spring 2022. This is accompanied by a little promotional video that you can go ahead and watch if you want. I'm sure you can find it on Twitter on Walt Disney World's page, or I'm sure it's on YouTube as well at this point. I'm not going to show it here because it'll probably get my video copyright struck, and I don't really want that to be honest. But essentially what the video is, is a family being able to board a Star Wars ship and live a life of Star Wars for two entire nights. Sounds like a pretty cool idea, to be honest. I'm not sure if I'd be super duper into it, because, I don't know, real life roleplay always makes me feel super self-conscious and things like that. But, you know, I'm sure there's fans out there that would, like, live for this and absolutely love it. So, at first, a lot of people who love Walt Disney World, love Star Wars, love this kind of Star Wars hotel type experience. You know, this is not the first time this has ever been done. If you think about, like, the Nickelodeon Cruise Line or whatever, I guess it was done there with Nick characters and, and worlds, but this is just a Star Wars-centered one. So, you know, it got people pretty hyped up. People like this concept in general. It, it's an exciting thing. It'd be a cool adventure to spend with your family if they all like Star Wars as well, or if you're a parent and you're not that into Star Wars, but hey, your kid flippin' loves it, it's like, oh, great, you know, it'll make the kid happy, we can just hang out at the bar all day. Sounds good. So that was the initial response until people found out about these prices, and let me tell you, this is where it takes a turn. So. They also released a little package of, uh, you know, prices for how much the hotel room slash experience is. And so uh, it says, sample standard cabin rates. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser rates vary depending on your voyage departure date, the number of guests in your cabin, and your cabin type. That's pretty typical. You know, a penthouse is of course going to cost more than a broom closet. And if you have four people, it's going to cost more than two. And it also depends on the dates you choose. You know, if you go to Florida during hurricane season, things are going to cost a lot less than if you go during peak vacation season. So that makes sense. And the prices they brought forward, however, don't make much sense. Now you'd think with them giving that little caveat at the top, it's probably that they're giving you the lowest prices that they could possibly have because that's how they like to promote these things. They're not gonna give you the most expensive possible price right up front because then no one's gonna do it. No, you're gonna give them like, okay, if it's off season, if you have the least amount of people uh, and you know you have the cheapest cabin type, boom, we'll give you those prices. And then if you start upping the things, then we'll show you the real costs, like at checkout. That way they've already got the families basically agreeing to do it. Now it's just a matter of finding out the price and it's gonna be harder to walk away from that after committing to at least looking. You know, it's that foot in the door theory in terms of psychology. So let's go over these rates. Two guests per cabin is going to be $1,200 per guest per night or $4,800 total. And it's a two night stay. Now, obviously they put the 1200 up front to make it sound more reasonable and then they give you the total after that. So, it really doesn't matter per guest per night, the, the total is what matters here. Almost five grand for two people for two nights to get this Star Wars experience. No, 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 that's, that's not all. Let's bump it up, let's go three guests per cabin and it, it 
quantifies this as two adults and one child. It specifies $889 per guest per night or $5,300 total. Now, obviously the guest per night is going to be less because it's a bulk package uh, and you get a premium basically for coming in bulk as well as having children. You don't have to pay for alcohol or anything like that. So the price actually goes down a little bit, but still $5,300 for three people for two nights. But wait, there's more. If you want four guests per cabin, which is spef specified as three adults and one child, what does that even mean? Like three adults, so so you're bringing, you you know, you're the husband, you got your wife, and then you got, you know, Uncle Bill. What? <laughs> or like, hey, this is my best friend Kevin. Kevin, hop aboard with us to go on this family vacation. It's so bizarre. And then little Timmy, you know, the child. It's so weird. Like, what? that's such a random thing. I mean, I guess if you brought like a grandparent or I don't know. Yeah, I guess you could bring an uncle, but that'd be super weird. I don't know. It just seems bizarre to have three adults, one child. Wouldn't it normally be two adults, two children? I don't know, dude. Uh, either way, it's 749 per guest per night or $6,000 total. $6,000 total. Oh my god. To put that into perspective, you know, if you're making minimum wage, that's probably what you make in one quarter of the year. You know, that's what you're making quarterly. Four months. No, that's incorrect math. Three months. Oh my god, <laughs> my stupidity is coming out in this video. Uh, that's that's an absurd cost, and people just don't have that lying around to pay for a two-night vacation. I'd understand if it was like a week-long vacation with four people, and it's like you're going all out, this is the one vacation a year you get, so you're like, you know what, we're spending, we're spending, we're gonna have a great time. But no, you're trapped in this hotel for two nights, and you're paying six grand. That's just so absurd to me. I think this pricing is out of control. I mean, truly, this is only for the extremely wealthy or, you know, I, I guess if you saved up a lot. Like, <laughs> it, it's not really a, a great thing for anyone who's trying to be economically smart with their money. Like, I'd understand if this was like, your absolute dream vacation and you save up three years to do it and you love every single minute of it, then maybe it's worth the money. But I feel like they're advertising this for average Joe Schmo who just likes Star Wars and is like, oh, I'd like a Star Wars themed vacation, sure. You know, not like super fan McGee who's willing to like drain his bank account for this. Like seriously, I love Star Wars just like the next guy. I have an entire YouTube channel about it, but six grand for two nights? No, thanks, dog. Not to mention, it's not really my my thing, my scene to begin with. But like, even if it was, I, I don't think I could I could do that. The mouse is, is charging too much. So either way, I thought this was absurd. And I thought, you know, it'd be fun to make a little video on this. And uh, a lot of other people on Twitter found this absurd as well. So I thought we'd read some of the tweets criticizing this. Uh, so Abby, uh, with 760 likes, says, Star Wars Hotel. Ma'am, you have to pay for this. Me, commandeering a room dressed as a smuggler. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was supposed to be immersive. Hello, Greedo, uh, another Star Wars YouTuber out there said, If you all gave me one dollar, I'd be able to pay for my family to visit the Galactic Star Cruiser. But I'd pocket the money and put it in my daughter's savings account and then green screen myself in front of some Star Wars hotel room and pretend I went to this thing for the college money. Eh, you know, big brain. Jim does a Star Wars who got 3.2k likes on this said, At the Star Wars hotel. Me. Wow, this is so immersive. Someone cuts off my hand. Me. Incredible. Ben at the Republic Fair with 500 likes says, But who will hold the incredible distinction of first to bone in the Star Wars Hotel? Defunct Lane, uh, who is a big YouTuber who covers like roller coasters and amusement parks and, you know, old defunct 
buildings and, and you know, amusement park related mainly. Uh, it's actually really interesting stuff. I highly recommend his channel. I went down his rabbit hole a while ago and I don't even like amusement parks, but I found that the videos were just extremely entertaining, so I highly recommend. But either way, he said, so we're all in agreement that the Star Wars hotel experience will last like three years tops before it's just a normal hotel, right? Which I have a feeling he's probably right. I think no one's really gonna bite at this. I, I just don't see it going crazy right off the bat. Um, and even if it does, I think once people have done it, no one's gonna return for a revisit, you know? It's just straight up too expensive. T. Martin, who uh, is a Call of Duty YouTuber, and actually the last time I heard from him was when he was in a scandal for CSGO loot boxes. Comment down below if you remember that. Uh, but he said, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, a two night full interactive hotel experience. Go on missions, operate the ship, Jedi training, etc. Interact with movie characters, eat exotic foods, visit planet Batu. Costs about the same as a Disney cruise. This looks sick, emoji with hard eyes. And I think he's pretty authentic about this. Like, was this paid for by Disney for him to promote or something? Um, his comments are full of people like, yeah, if, if you can afford it, uh, which I think he probably can. He's been a very extremely successful YouTuber for a long time. Um, but I guess this is who this is for mainly, you know, those who can afford to do this. B word King of Angmar says, starting at $4,809. God, I mean, I know there's some Ammonite, Ammonite, am, Ammonites? Oh, amenities. Oh my God, I'm an, I'm a dummy, dumb, dumb. <laughs> amenities. Oh my God. God, I mean, I know there's some amenities included, but Jesus, that's so much money. Isn't this the one where you can't even leave the hotel during your stay? 1138 says, every hotel is a Star Wars hotel if you're not a coward. Oh, and here we go. Okay, someone actually tweeted out the itinerary for this, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so I hadn't seen this before, but let's go over it now. So day one, you arrive at the terminal at 1 p.m. The launch pod to Star Cruiser is 15 minutes after that. Ship orientation is 30 minutes until 2.15. Then you have a 30 minute light refreshments, hopefully some blue milk in there. Then you have Sabak lessons for 30 minutes. Then you muster for 30 minutes. Then there's the captain's reception that goes until five. Uh, then there's a dinner featuring live music. The outer rim regalia is from 7.15 to 7.30. Unexpected story moment happens. For example, you might prove your medal to join an elite smuggling ring. Hide a stowaway to help the resistance? from 7.30 to 8 p.m. <laughs> oh, how unexpected. Uh, then there's bridge training from 8 to 8.45. Then there's special atrium entertainment from 8.30 to 8.45 p.m. That's day one. Day two, seven to eight is breakfast. Transport shuttle to Batu is 8.15 to 8.25. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is from 8.45 to 9.30. Not sure what that is. Uh, oh, that's the, that's the uh, roller coaster, I think, actually. Uh, then there's a story moment. For example, you might broker a deal for a heist? Arrange to steal a ship from the First Order? Then there's the Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run from 10 to 10.30. Then there's lunch at Docking Bay, seven food and cargo for an hour. Then at 12.40, there's transport shuttle to Star Cruiser. Then at one, there's lightsaber training for 30 minutes. Droid racing competition for 20 minutes after that. Build model ship for 30 minutes after that. Sabak tournament for an hour after that. Cocktails at Sublight Lounge from 5 to 5.30. Taste around the galaxy dinner from 5.30 to 7. And then story moment. For example, you might put the heist plan into action or bring the stolen ship aboard and watch out for the first order. And then a spectacular finale from 10 to 11 p.m. Uh, and then day three, breakfast, and then you're booted out by 10 a.m. Um, to be honest, after reading this, none of it sounds all that interesting. There's some stuff that sounds kind of fun, lightsaber training, um, I don't know what Sabak is, to be completely honest. Maybe I'm dumb. <laughs> I feel like I, I have a Star Wars channel I should probably know, but I just don't know. The roller coaster seems kind of neat, uh, if you're into roller coasters. The dinners sound kind of cool, like it'd be neat to see what kind of foods they serve, but I'm sure it's just like a Big Mac, and they call it like a, uh, 
uh, Wookie Wookie Burger. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm a little underwhelmed by this itinerary, to be completely honest. Uh, could be kind of cool. Maybe it, maybe it's cooler in writing than what it is here. But it is. It's all sequel based, and I get that the sequels are like you know Disney's sort of thing. That's their Star Wars thing. But if I'm doing like a Galactic Star Cruiser thing that I'm paying six grand for. I want it to be like all eras, you know? I want the chance to run into Obi-Wan Kenobi. I want the chance to run into Luke Skywalker. I want the chance to see Ahsoka Tano, you know? I don't want it just to be the First Order. Like, it'd be cool to see First Order stuff, but like, I want it to be everything. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, maybe that's just me. Either way, guys, that's going to be about it for today's video. Um, I just thought it was an interesting piece of Star Wars news, and I want to start doing more Star Wars news stuff, similar to the stuff I do over in uh, the Daily Thoughts channel. So uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of this. Be sure to hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and comment your own thoughts and opinions on this below. I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think about all this. Either way, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.